Hallelujah. Please help me welcome your neighbor to the left, to the right. You are welcome to the presence of God. This is your service. Hallelujah. You may please be seated in the presence of the Lord. This is a covenant day of all round rest. It's also a prophetic entrance service. The prophetic theme for the month is my star is rising. Can somebody say that with me? My star is rising. Please, you may have come with your desires, your desires for the month of February. Do where to drop it on this ground. The power of God as at work here will be meeting from there and you will have testimonies to show for it in Jesus' mighty name. Now, I'm going to start a serious teaching that will run in all our Sunday services this month. And it is with the theme Unveiling Our Breaking Limit Heritage in the World. Unveiling Our Breaking Limit Heritage in the World. I'm looking at part 1A in this service. Remember, today is still our covenant day of rest roundabout. Come with me to Mark chapter 4. I read 35 to 39 as my text. Mark 4, 35 to 39. The Bible said, And the same day when the evening was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, if they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little sheep. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him, and said unto him, Master, carry thou not that we perish. And he arose, and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. I'm here to speak to someone here today. It doesn't matter the restlessness that has been surrounding your life, your family, your affairs. Everything that has been troubling you is receiving calmness in the name of Jesus. Every storm is over in the name of Jesus. I command every contrary wind of life, peace be still in the name of Jesus. Maybe you came here today not even willing to live again. You came here today with troubles, issues of life confronting you, giving you sleepless nights. Maybe some people stronger than you are raising up against you to swallow you up and you are perplexed. But hear me and hear me well. You will receive great calm. The contrary wind of life will cease in Jesus' name. Precious people of God, we are in a restless world today. Life's journey is full of storms, wars, troubles, challenges. And everyone needs calmness. Everyone needs serenity. Everyone needs peace and rest round about. But I've discovered that it's only those with Jesus, the Prince of Peace, in the boat of their life will enjoy rest. Jesus is the giver of rest round about. And he does so by his word. And by his word coming our way today, you will find rest in the name of Jesus. Every area of your life where you are desiring rest, you will find rest in the name of Jesus. Concerning your children, concerning the work of your hand, concerning your marriage, your relationship, concerning even your finances, your career, the academics, God will give you rest in the name of Jesus. Whatever came here with you as trouble is returning with you as a testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. One day a family was troubled. That was in Abaddon. And uh, what was the issue? Their child woke up and started crying uncontrollably and um, refused to stop crying. They did everything within their power to ensure that the child stopped crying. And the child was still crying. Even when they had gone to hospital, the baby still kept crying. And they said, okay, they called me on phone. Pastor, we want to see you. As I'm at home, and they drove to my house then. I came out to meet them. The baby was still crying in the hand of the mother. I said, give me the baby. I carried the baby, and the baby slept in my hand. Calmness returned. Now hear me, and hear me well. 
whatever has been troubling you today, calmness is returning. Yeah. Every shame that is looming will not come. Yeah. Every oppression of the wicked one will not succeed. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody is here today, your marriage is receiving calmness in the name of Jesus. Your children are receiving calmness in the name of Jesus. Your finance is receiving calmness in the name of Jesus. Your health, your career is receiving calmness in the name of Jesus. Your business, your academics is receiving calmness in the name of Jesus. Every form of storm is coming to an end. One day man went through financial storm for about two years, two good years. No job, no contract, everything it was you know, it was ended borrowing here and there because of challenges. But something happened. God opened doors for him. To the prayer of the side. He got a multi million contract. And by the grace of God, all the shame, all the reproaches, all the storm quench. Glory to God. Whatever need to be quenched for your joy to be established, I command it to be quenched. Yeah. You know one thing the Bible says, God can make the storm. God can make the storm. And he make it wars to cease. Every war right now in your finances, I command it to cease. Yeah. Every war in your health, I command it to cease. Yeah. Every war in your marriage, I command it to cease. Yeah. I don't know the pressure you are going through right now. That pressure is turning to pleasure. In the name of Jesus Christ. One day, a family came to me all the way from Zaria. Then I was in Kaduna. Because they've given them a budget. Now this man and the wife, they've been going you know, to see a, a, a consultant at um, Ahmad Bello University in Zaria. One day, the man called them and said, look, we are tired of taking your money. You cannot have a child naturally because you don't have any sperm count. That was enough trouble. They left with their faces bowed down, trying to seek help somewhere. But something said to them, go and see your pastor. And they came around. I asked them, what is the problem? And they said, look, look at the report. <laughs> Doctor said no sperm can so no possibility of a child naturally. Okay? And I asked them a question. How many sperm count did Mary use to conceive Jesus? And they say no. So what happened? The Bible said the power of the highest came upon her. Is that okay? Okay, that same power of the highest is domiciled in you and I if we are born again. So by the same power of the highest, man, you are complete in him, who is the head of all principalities and powers. The prayer was made, anointed them, go your way. And nine months after, they were delivered the baby boy. <laughs> spam count or no spam count, that storm was quenched. Every storm that I followed you here today, I command it to be quenched. Yeah. Now, what does all round rest mean? What does it connote? All round rest means shalom. And shalom simply means peace. Shalom means prosperity. All round awareness. All round awareness. In other words, at this realm, you live a concern free life. You have lack of no good thing. You will not run heter skater again. Every area of your life, you need peace. I command peace to come to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now the good news I have for you is that you have come. He said, come unto me, oh you that level and a heavy leather, and I will give you rest. Come and learn of me, for I am meek and lonely heart. And I will give you rest. Come and learn of me and you will find the rest for your souls. I don't know the level, the stress, the struggle, the pressures, but he has told you to come and you have come. <laughs> The Bible said they came to hear and to be healed. He has told you to come and you have come. You are qualified for his rest. Therefore, receive rest round about. Receive rest round about. In the name of Jesus. Some principle way is through his word. Jesus 
the prince of peace is also the word of God. So when God wants to give you rest, one of the things he does is to give you his word. As people of God, the word of God is a mirror of life. So we're going to be looking at our break, limit breaking heritage from the mirror of the word of God. James chapter 1, 22 to 25. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers, only deceiving your own self. For if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, it's like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholded himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetted what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his day. The word blessed means empowerment to enjoy rest, empowerment to progress, empowerment to be fruitful, empowerment to succeed. This man shall be blessed in his day. The word of God is God's instrument for delivery of rest. And from the word of God, we can see, number one, that by redemption, you have eternal life. Eternal life is a God kind of life. This is the way. In other words, you share divinity with God. By the word of God, humanity can share with divinity. The word of God shows to us that we have eternal life. I want to ask you a question. Can God experience wars or troubles or challenges. No, 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 he can't. If you have the life of God in you, trouble, trouble, trouble will be quenched. Especially if you know what to do with his word with you. Now hear me. Whatever trouble the enemy has sent your way will quench it by the weapon of the world. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Romans 6 23. For the wages of sin is there, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Say with me, I am born again. If you are, I have eternal life. I have the God kind of life. This is the trouble free kind of life. Now, are we saying challenges won't come? No. Please understand the context we are saying what we are saying. Are we saying that issues will not arise? Yes. But you are imbued with what it takes to quench what is coming. Are you getting what I'm talking about? You have the eternal life of God. If you are conscious of that, you have what it takes to weather the storms of life. That's why there are some things that may have come your way. The same thing came to others. They gave up. And now let me tell you something. The more of the word of God that comes into you, because the word of God is a carrier of also eternal life, the more of his word you imbibe, the more of God you become, and the more capacity you will have to weather the storms of life. What somebody say, is somebody not, is this one not a believer? Why did this go through this? Why did this go? We are all not of the same capacity. We are not lighted alike. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Okay. Let me show you something. You see this, my paper? I have my tab here. I have this paper. Now, if I do like this now, they have different weights. Is that okay? Okay, this is my tab now. I blow it. It may not move it. Are you getting what I'm talking about? It's just like somebody carrying much stick and another carrying um, lantern. <laughs> there are some, <laughs> some wind like this will blow up the light. They're all light. Is it okay? But wind can blow up that much stick, but it may not blow up the lantern. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Now, look at this. Please, somebody help me get that. This is how we are in the spirit. There are some believers that are paperweights. 
So when the storms of life come, because they, they've not built enough capacity, storms take them. It's not that the storm should take them, but they have what it takes. Potentially, they have what it takes, but they have not built the capacity through the word of God, through the instrument of the word of God, to match the issues of life. Take me out here. So we may wear the same coats. We may wear the same hairdo. <laughs> we may do, do the same makeup. Maybe the same hairstylist. Is it okay? But we are not equal in the spirit. Everyone has his own capacity. There are people that can say, hey, they go, hey, they go. There are people that can say to HIV, go, HIV will go. There are people that even talk to headache, headache, say, who are you? Where is your ID card? Ask the source of scape if you don't understand. <laughs> Number two, you are born again a supernatural being. A supernatural being. Supernatural means above the natural. So what happened to all that should not happen to you? If you are born again, say with me, I'm supernatural. <laughs> the quicker you understand this, the better for you. You are supernatural. In other words, you are a wonder. For me and the children, the Lord has given to me, we are for signs and what? For wonders. You are a wonder. They'll be, you know, they'll be asking you where is your God. Very soon now they'll be asking you how are you doing it. You know why? You're a wonder. They can't comprehend you. They can't fathom you. You, they, you, they can't explain your ways. Because you are supernatural. Remember John 3 8. The Bible said, The wind bloweth where it listed, and I hear the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. So if you are born again, child of God, you are born of the Spirit, and if you are born of the Spirit, you are like wind. You know, wind? Can you set trap for the wind? Try and set trap for the wind and catch it. Any day you catch the wind with your trap, call me, I will come and look. <laughs> Who has gathered the wind with his fist? Try and catch it. Catch wind now with your hand. Catch it and hold it tight. Take it to your house. You won't. It will escape from everywhere. If you are born again, that is how you are. So I just were pastor. I don't know. They put something in front of my shop. I can't enter there. See, it's not that nothing is working. Because you don't understand who you are. You wind. You win. You know what is wind? And in my place, they say that is you can't catch wind with trap. You cannot. That's who you are. But many a time we don't understand who we are. The second service I'm going to show us this thing from another dimension. Honestly, I wish. We'll all be able to understand. Because the day you understand this, even witches will be afraid of you. Wizards will be afraid of you. Occultic people will be afraid of you. Because we have not understood. That's why small things start crying. Pastor, the way the woman look at me, and the woman is a notorious witch. Since I went to the village, I saw her face like that. I noticed that oh, this will be okay again, though. No? It's because you don't understand who you are. Somebody comes and says you will not marry. <laughs> or they said they told you somebody I vowed that you will never marry. That you will go to school, you will not graduate, or you will not get employment. They, that is their own opinion. Who is it that said it and it come to pass? Except God has commanded it. It is what God has commanded that come to pass, not what the witch commanded. You don't even know. In the, in the spirit, you know where you are? The Bible said you are seated in heavenly places far above. Where you are, they can't come there. Even their father, the devil, can't come there. They can't come there. Tell him I say so. They can't come there. As you are looking at me now, no witch can look at this eye. 
no witch in this world. Get the highest witch in your village. You can't look at these eyes. You don't know who you are. You are bright and morning star. <laughs> and every star give father with another star in glory. So there is a glory for you. Why is shame looming around? You are supernatural. Above only and not beneath. Say with me, I hear. No devil will pin you down again. You will not suffer what others suffer. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But how do I assess God's plan for me through his word? How do I assess God's plan for me through his word? Number one is that you must be born again. You must. It's a must. Must. There are two musts in the Bible. The first one is you must be born again. The first one you must believe. <laughs> you must be born again. John 1 12. As many as received him to them gave him power to be called the sons of God and even to them that believe in him. You must be born again. He that is born of the spirit is spirit. You can't operate in the supernatural in this kingdom except you are born of the spirit. So you need to be born again. I didn't say born against too. Born again. Some are in church but they are born against. Not born again. You need a new birth. You need a regeneration of your spirit. When Adam fell, he leads the devil, he leads the heart to the devil. That's why the devil could confront Jesus and said, if you bow to me, I will give you all the kingdoms of the earth because they've been delivered to me. Look at Luke chapter 4 verse 6. So you need to be in Christ. You need to be born again. You need your spirit to be regenerated. For you to operate in the supernatural. And until you begin to operate in the supernatural, you are not a wonder. Number two, you must continue to be spiritual. You must continue to be spiritual. It is one thing to be born again is another thing to be spiritual. There are people who are born again but they stay carnal. As a matter of fact, the greatest problem in the church today is carnality. And no church can make progress. They never will be happy. Be born again and remain carnal. Because you will still be oppressing the person. That's why you see all manner of things in church. Malice, envy, jealousy, evil speaking, slander, rebellion, pride. Carnality is the greatest problem in the church today. And carnality is a step from death. For if you are carnally minded, you will die. Because to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life. Romans 8, 6. As a matter of fact, when you are carnal, you are an enemy of God. Hear me. We don't only have witches in town, or there are witches in church. Any carnal person can do what you don't believe. Even a Muslim cannot do. You'll be wondering, is this one a pastor? Is this one, is this one in church? Is this one like this? Carnality. That's why a brother and a brother can do business together. They agree that if this business goes through, profit sharing, 60-40, immediately the money hit the account. The brother say, I know be born again. Instead of sitting in front, you used to sit before, you'll be sitting at the head near the, the door. So the military they shout goodness and mercy. He said, bro, what is happening? This, this, that. He said, he will tell you how cockroach entered his bag. All manner of story will come out. You disturb him too much. He said, there's winners everywhere. I will leave this branch of winners for you. He said, I will tell pastor. He said, I will leave winners for you. I will go to another place. That's a born again believer. He talked too much. He said, I will show you. Do you know where I come from? That's the same person you've been taking communion with. Oh. A 
a carnal man can do the undo. And that is one of the greatest problems of Christianity today. Carnality everywhere. Carnality. Picking offense. Unforgiving spirit. Including husband and wife. Oh. The wife will cook. He said, I know go chop. He said, chop, sir. He said, I know go chop. So what is he saying? He can't even explain. Sometimes it is very, very small, small thing that don't even... Uh, Even unbelievers will be the one separating them. He said, okay, leave him. I said, no, go leave him. Mind your business. This is a family issue. Pastor, also come to the house. They will settle. Quickly, they will settle and clean their face. And pretend as if everything is working. And ready, Pastor, I never leave you. I never leave. <laughs> Hear me. Can you go anywhere with your back? Can you go anywhere with your back? Anytime you are working against laws of life and laws of God, you can't succeed. It's not possible. Most of the restlessness we experience is because we work against existing laws of life. Don't worry. I will expose that more in the second service with illustrations. People suffer what they suffer because they work against laws. If you go to the road now, you see traffic jam. It's, in, it's not that the road, the people can't pass. But you know what the problem? I don't go agree. <laughs> I don't go agree. That's the problem. He said, pass. He said, no, I don't go allow you to pass. Make I pass first. The whole place will jam. Disorder will come. All of the, everybody will be under pressure, sweating. But if you can allow that much, just one minute, one second, say, just pass. Let me pass. The road will go through. Everybody will go. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Any area you are suffering pressure, find out there are certain laws you have disobeyed. There are certain laws, certain things you have not done or you are ignored. Life is run, no, life is run by laws and principles. Find out. So if you can, why do we come to church? Why do we read the Bible? So that we can know the laws of God. And so when you put those laws to work, you discover that you will enjoy rest. But when you say it doesn't matter, that's when precious storms begin to come. One of the cheapest ways to teach people today, especially youths and teenagers, is the power of consequence. If people can understand the consequence of their actions, wouldn't advise them to do it. For every action, there is a corresponding action. So, when you do what you are not supposed to do, get set to face the pressures that come from it. And that's why many are having restlessness. And it has to do with every area of life. Say with me, I hear. So, if you are enjoying financial, if you are having financial pressure now, find out there are certain laws you are not keeping. Maybe you are not paying tight. <laughs> and everyone pays. Everyone pays. Some people pay to God correctly. Some pay to the devil. Any amounts. Some pay to mechanics. Some pay to hospital. Anytime he has money, sickness will come. When the money finish, sickness will wait. He needs money to come. Another sickness will come. Save me I here. Okay? Quickly, let's see this. How to assess the realm of all round rest. As we begin. How to ask the realm of all around rest. Hear me, don't think that there is no place. Let me tell you nobody there is a place like that. There is a place of all round rest. All round rest. First Kings 5 4. And the Lord my God has given me rest round about. In that there is no evil occurring, neither an adversary. That's what Solomon said. So there is a place like that. An evil free zone of life. A place of rest round about. A place where there is no adversary, no evil occurring. <laughs> I command you to enter that realm from today. In 
Enjoy evil free life in the name of Jesus. Enjoy adversary free life in the name of Jesus. Enjoy rest round about. In Jesus' glorious name. Amen. To enjoy or have access to the realm of rest roundabout, we must recognize that rest roundabout is the will of God for every child of God. If you are a child of God, the will of God for you and I is to enjoy rest roundabout. Hebrews chapter 4, 9 to 10. There remained therefore a rest for the people of God, for him that entered in, into his rest, he also had ceased from his own words, as God did for his. Matthew eleven twenty eight to twenty nine. Come unto me, all ye that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lonely in heart, and ye shall find rest for you, unto your souls. Every child of God, if God called, even today he will see make up that call. He will call people to come and be saved. He's calling them to come and take rest. If he doesn't have what he tells, he will not be advertising. You know, when someone promises you a thing, the first thing you look at is you want to find out his antecedent. Has he ever done it before? Has can he do it? If somebody said, I want to give you a shoe, look at the one he's wearing. If it's Pinkolo shoe. Just know the kind of shoe you get. <laughs> so if God says, "Come, I will give you rest," find out, has He given people rest? I'm showing you the example of Solomon. David, his father, fought many battles, but God allowed Solomon not to fight battle. Solomon actually means son of peace, and I told you, peace is shalom. Shalom is all around the rest. <laughs> he said, "God has given me rest roundabout." Who gave him rest roundabout? The same God will give you. The God of Solomon is your God. Remember, a greater than Solomon is here. If you are in Christ Jesus, you are greater than Solomon. But how do I qualify for all this round race? All this round, all round race. How do I qualify? Of course, you know centrally, every blessing of God you starts with salvation. Being born again, we have said that before, so we don't need to waste time on that. John 14 27, Jesus said, Peace I live with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the word giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I don't know who have been afraid here, who have been of fearful heart, who has been troubled here. Please trouble not. Let not your heart be troubled. Jesus said, I will give you peace, not as the world giveth it. The world cannot give peace. There is no market in this world where they are selling peace. If you see anyone, invite me. I want to follow you to the market. Only Jesus can give peace because he's the Prince of Peace. And he said, I will give you peace. It doesn't matter the trouble, it doesn't matter the storm. I will give you peace. Just like he was in the storm and the waters got troubled, the ship was about to say, he said, peace be still, and peace return. There was calmness. The same way today I speak to you, because he said he's going to give you peace. If you're a child of God, I speak to you in the name of Jesus. Enjoy peace like a river. Enjoy rest in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, that project in your hand will receive speed this year. Supernatural help will answer to you. Whatever we make for your peace, I command you to come your way. Amen. Number two, how do I qualify for rest roundabout? You settle down in the house of God. <laughs> settle down in the house of God with your God. Second Samuel 7:10. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and I will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own. And move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them anymore as before time. This is one of such appointed places. Say so they will dwell in the, and they dwell in the place of their own and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them. Now hear me, the power to afflict can be withdrawn. <laughs> Ask the lions that Daniel was sent to the power to hurt was withdrawn from them as the fire of Uncle Nebu when the three Hebrew boys came there 
the power fire say i don't have power to hurt you in 1998 in Akure, the first week i went to be a pastor i was given acid to drink i took the acid with my mouth but nothing happened to the body <laughs> the one that came out of my mouth both my shirt and my shirt i was wearing but the one that entered inside me nothing happened because god quickened his word to me in luke 10 19 behold i gave unto thee power to tread upon serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by enemies shall not will shall is a stronger legal term than will ask any lawyer nothing shall by enemies hurt you and mark 16 18 if they drink any deadly thing it shall by no means hurt them i'm still alive today maybe you couldn't have seen me <laughs> glory to god hear me and hear me well i don't know what i've been sent to trouble your life it will not succeed it will not succeed it will not succeed so settle down in the house of god don't be one leg in one leg out how can you be coming to a church like this you hear the word of god like this and you see going to look for native doctor looking for who will check your hand or read your hand or tell you what the future will hold that means don't be a spiritual mumu how can you go to bow down in a native doctor's house that you can't even stand up or they say enter with back if it is if the thing is working the person won't be in that kind of place Please and please appeal with you. Settle down with God. Those who settle down with God get the issues of their life settled. Settle down with God. Sit down. Anything God cannot do. Did you hear one of the testimonies we had today? He said, if God can't do it, then it doesn't exist. Anything God cannot do, nobody can. One woman was looking for a child, and a native doctor charged her 10 million. And she paid, but she couldn't get the child. <laughs> a custom officer. She died with her maid for it. They buried her in the compound. Don't go and look for a solution where there is no solution. If God can't help you, nobody can help. If God can't do it, nobody can do. It pains my heart when some people are deceived. And some of them, when they are doing this, they will not tell anybody. It's when they are suffering the thing, they ask the pastor pray on prayer. I don't know what I entered into. Something was telling me to come for prayer, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You will not be a victim of evil. In the name of Jesus. Settle down in the house of God. Zion is a place of rest. That's God's dwelling place. There is no place like church in the whole world. The White House cannot be compared to a church. Because that is God's dwelling place. God does not dwell in your house. He can visit your house, but he doesn't dwell there. But in the church, he dwells there. That is his resting place forever. That's why the church is unique. There's no blood of sprinkling in your house. But in the church, there's blood of sprinkling. There are no innumerable company of angels in your house. So they say, ah, I'm watching it through television. <laughs> My brother, <laughs> there's a difference. That's why somebody can enter here without anybody praying or laying hands. Before you know it, the trouble will come with you. You will look for it. You won't see it. Why? There are innumerable company of angels descending. This is the gate of heaven, sir. Settle down in the house of God. That's why some people can come here even when no service is holding. And they come and talk to God here. God answers them. There is no place like church in the whole world. There is no place in this world like church. Because that is God's dwelling place. A place God has put his name. That is the New Testament city of refuge. I know what happened in the city of refuge in the Old Testament. If a vengeful of blood is pursuing you and you run into the city of refuge, the Bible said, you shall be kept by the elders of that land until the death of the high priest who shall be in those days. And our high priest cannot die again. That's why you will never say any literature. Refer to Jesus as late Jesus. You will never say it. He lives forevermore. And because he lives forevermore, he can't die. So when you take refuge in this city of refuge, you are protected. Say with me I hear. <laughs> Number three. You enter a covenant to serve God. 
enter a covenant to serve God and the interests of his kingdom and make it your priority for living. Enter a covenant to serve God and the interests of his kingdom and make it a priority for living. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. When you make God's kingdom your priority, kingdom lifestyle your priority, promoting the interests of the kingdom and the interests of God, you are a candidate for race roundabout. Now something happened in Second Chronicles 15. In that time, there was no teaching priest. You can't lack these three things in your life and have peace. You must have a teaching priest. You must have law. You must have the true God. A time came in the life of Israel. They didn't have the true God. They didn't have laws. And they didn't have the teaching priest. So there was trouble everywhere. Vestation of spirit for him that goes out and cometh in. But a time came they realized we are missing something. Let's look for the true God. Let's, we are the laws of God. We are our teaching priests. And they enter the covenant. In 2 Chronicles 12, uh, 15, 12. They enter the covenant to seek the Lord. And anyone that will not seek him will be put to death. And in verse 15, the Bible says, God was found of them. May God be found of us today. God was found of them. And God gave them rest. Right. Because they enter the covenant. Hear me. God is a covenant keeping God. He's a covenant making God. He's a covenant remembering God. You can't enter a covenant with him to serve him. And serve the interests of your kingdom. And not enjoy rest. This must be a dumb decision. In case you have made that decision before to serve him. You have to defy it. You engineer the process. In case you have not made today the decision that I will serve this God. Come rain or come. You know, people are waiting for who will follow them up because they've not made the decision to serve God. Hear me. The way you are looking for God, that's the way I'm looking for Him. That's where all of us are looking for Him. Glory to God. Make a covenant to serve God. God does not bless people as a group, God blesses individuals. It is your commitment and your service that determines what you see from him. What you do with God determines what he does with you. Say, draw near to me, I will draw near to you. Rise on your feet. Serve me, I will serve the Lord. In a short while, we are going to pray and also give him thanks and rejoice before him. Now, Matthew 11, 28, remember, he said, Come out to me, all you that labor and have you let and I will give you rest. <laughs> God is willing to give rest, but one must take the step to confess. Now, He's inviting someone here to be saved, He's inviting you to give your life to Him. Hear me, you, have, you don't have capacity to give yourself rest, only God has the capacity to give you rest. That's why you need to partner with him. You need to be saved. You need to be born again. You need to be a child of God so that you can partake of the inheritance of the saints in life. Somebody is here today who wants to say, I want to be born again. I want to be a child of God. Please put your hand on your chest and pray this prayer of salvation with me. Somebody gave his or her life to Jesus before. Yes, you did. Surely you did. But right now you know you are no more there. It's no joy. Things are going haywire. You can return to him. He will return to you. When the prodigal son returns, enjoy peace. Why not return? Somebody also is suffering from certain evil habits and you know it that new resolution didn't help you but Jesus can help you. Why not put your hand on your chest also and pray this prayer of dedication and salvation right now. Please, if you are doing, put your hand on your chest right now. Let's pray this prayer together. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I believe in my heart you are the only Son of God. You died and you resurrected on the third day. Today, from my heart and with my mouth, I confess you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me. Write my name in the book of life. I return to you, Lord. Return to me. Thank you, Jesus. I am saved. I'm a child of God. I'm washed by the precious blood of the Lamb. In Jesus' mighty name. Please, you pray that prayer with me. Wave your hand to Jesus wherever you are. You pray that prayer of salvation with me. Please wave your hand to Jesus. If you pray that prayer, God bless you. God bless you for your sincerity. Please, take a step. Take a step. Come. Your bag, your Bible, whatever you came to church with, walk to the front of the altar now. Please come, 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 come. Come the way you are. Jesus loves you the way you are. You are good for him the way you are. Please come, 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 come. Tomorrow may be too late. 
Walk out on the devil and come to Jesus right now. Come, come, come. My lifetime, Lord, I give Please, if you are coming, come, 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 come. My lifetime, Lord, I give you my life. Concerning my children, concerning my spouse, Lord, give me rest. Rest round about. Rest round about. Rest round about. As you are praying, you can pick your prayer, desires for February, and also talk to God this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, I call upon you, give me rest round about. Let my desires also for this month of February be fulfilled. Give me advancement. Give me rest. Give me peace. Jesus. Give me rest round about. You are the giver of rest. He said, Come unto me, all you that labor heavy laden, I will give you rest. Give me rest. Please go towards my left. All of you in front of me. Jesus, give me rest round about. Establish my rest round about. This covenant of rest round about, establish rest round about for me. I give you the glory and praise. Blessed be your name, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' glorious name. You will have rest in the name of Jesus. You will not see shame in the name of Jesus. Every trouble of your life I command it to be quenched. In Jesus' glorious name. Everything here I command it to become a testimony. It shall turn to you for a testimony. It shall turn to you for a testimony. I mean, it shall turn to you for a testimony. The God of heaven will give you a testimony concerning these issues. Whatever came today as a trouble, as a concern, as a challenge, as a storm, it turns to a testimony for you. Enjoy rest roundabout. Any area of your life you look at to, from now, you will enjoy rest. There shall be no area of your life you look at and you, you, you sigh. You will not look at any area of your life again and ask God, why me? My God will show you a token for God. In Jesus' mighty name.